Hello, 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 ladies and gentlemen. Hope you guys had a great night tonight. Um, hopefully you guys had a good cash in NBA, but if you don't know who I am, my name is Shook. I make videos for NBA. Um, all these videos get posted on this subreddit, DF Sports, to make updates with all the news that comes out. You can talk strategy here, you can ask me questions, stuff like that. I'll always respond to you. Sometimes after lock, I can't respond to you, but before lock, I'll always, always respond to you. So check that out. Also, if you never need to get a hold of me privately, you can get a hold of me on Twitter at Tori Langley1992. Um, so if you never ever need to get a hold of me privately, you can do that um, <clears throat> that way. So let's take a look at my lineup from tonight. And I, you guys have no idea how tilted I am from tonight. Um, I really, really, oh, by the way, um, Discord, if that's something you're interested in, I'll have a link to that below where I have in-depth content going over each slate, player pools for cash, GPPs. I'll give you a core of four players to play. A great group of people that you can talk strategy with. Um, probably the best community that I've ever been in. And that's not cap. That's literally not cap. It's, it's fucking awesome. Um, so check that out. Link will be down below. So you, you guys have no idea. Skip ahead if you don't want to hear this tilt. So where do I need to start? Mr. Carlisle. Mr. Mr. Carlisle. Starting. George Hill. What are we doing? Why are we playing the dust of George Hill in 2023 on the Indiana Pacers who are tanking to get a better draft pick? What are we doing? George Hill is like 50 years old. What are what are we doing, Pacers? What what are we doing? What are we doing, Carlisle? What are we doing, Mister Carlisle? Another thing, Benedict Matherin having a pretty good game gets benched. Only plays fifteen minutes when. Every game prior, he's played 30 minutes or about 30 minutes. Tonight, a season low of minutes with Halliburton out. He was playing well, too. Shot 3 of 6, 1 of 2 from 3. Was over a fantasy point per minute, about. So if he plays 30 minutes, he easily pays off. What the fuck? What are we doing, Mr. Carlisle? Pull up a picture of Rick Carlisle. What the fuck, man? Mr. Rick Carlisle. Mr. Andrew Nemhard. Only 40% owned in high stakes. Shoots the ball. O of 8 and gets benched. Only plays 21 minutes. Okay. Okay. All right, dude. Mr. Joel Embiid. I swear to God. Actually, it's the Dallas Mavericks' fault. The Dallas Mavericks <coughs> could not miss a fucking shot for Embiid to get a freaking rebound. It was... It wasn't even Joel Embiid's fault. It really wasn't. He put up 35 relay points. Like, you would think if he puts up 35 relay points, he's paying off this price tag easily. <laughs> the Dallas Mavericks just could not miss. Just couldn't miss. Where else do I go? Where else do I start? Oh, by the way, I'll, I'll show you some stands that um, I had in my private video today in Discord. My biggest stand, and I told everyone in Discord, Yaka Pirtle, I thought, was the best tournament play on the slate. We had a bunch of people play Yaka Pirtle. I said in my video, like, ten times, I think, Yaka Pirtle looks amazing for GPPs. Yaka Pirtle is the best play on the slate, GPP-wise. Yaka Pirtle, the best GPP play on the slate. I hammered, hammered how much I liked Yaka Pirtle for GPPs. He absolutely broke the slate. Another one that I absolutely hammered, who I actually played, that was in my lineup, who smashed, 
was Jordan Amor. I was all over Jordan Amor. He smashed, shot the ball pretty poorly too, four of 10, one from four from three. But I was all over Jordan Amor. He did well. Um, the core that I had for today was Joel Embiid, reach value, fine. TJ McConnell, he smashed. Buddy Heald, he smashed. And Andrew Nemhard, which was the disappointment, unfortunately. Uh, then I rounded out my lineup with Luka Doncic. I was very surprised that Luka Doncic was only 24% owned when we had all this value. I was shocked at his ownership, and I was shocked at Zach Collins' ownership. Um, Zach Collins smashed, uh, probably like a point away from the fire emoji. I was shocked that he was only 7% owned. I was absolutely shocked um, that Zach Collins, only twenty, only 7% owned. Absolutely shocked. Um, so, what are you going to do? I finished like 5 points out of the cash. Or, sorry, 10, 15. What are you going to do? Can't do much there. Um, so, um, yeah. Uh, if Sochan doesn't go crazy, if Maxi doesn't go crazy in the fourth quarter there, and then if Matherin plays like 10 more minutes, I probably cash. So, unfortunate. Rick, Kyla, Rick Carlisle, you can go politely fuck yourself. Okay? Okay. All right, let's go over this 10 games. <laughs> sorry for the tilt, guys. I had to do it. I had to do it. Had to do it. Had to do it. Uh, but let's go over the slate. So we have Orlando at Charlotte. It's a pretty good spot here. So I do like some things on Orlando. Just the pace of this game, the defense in this game for Charlotte, just not going to be good. So I think Paulo Benchero, I know he's been very, very bad of late, but I think it's a matchup that we want to attack here. I think he looks like a pretty good play at 7.2K. Also, is that shooting forward eligibility. Wonder Car Jr. probably plays around 30 minutes. I think he's solid. Um, minutes have been down of late, but they've been dealing with foul trouble and blowouts. Um, so I think if the game stays close, he probably plays around 30 minutes. We've been targeting Charlotte um, all season against Biggs, so I don't know why that would change here. So I like both the top two guys here for uh, Orlando. I even think Marco Fultz at, at 6.1K is a solid play too. So unfortunately... There are some things to like about Orlando. Cole Anthony had a massive game last game. Definitely an outlier, but I think for him, he'll probably play around 20, 25 minutes. Fine GPP play. Jalen Suggs, kind of the same thing. Probably plays mid-20s minutes. Don't hate it. Also has shooting guard eligibility. Franz is just there. Doesn't really have a ceiling, but a fine play. But I like the main three guys for Orlando in a pretty good matchup. Um... So, yeah, those three, I think, look solid. Let's move on to Charlotte. So, unfortunately, I'm ready to play Kelly Oubre tomorrow, and I'm ready for him to shoot O of 500. But no Lamella Ball. It's not the best matchup. Um, but Terry Rozier is going to be the clear number one offensively. Price has gone up, but I will say this. He has been very, very underwhelming when lamello has been out this season. So, while I think he's a good play, if he's going to be popular like he was last night, I, I faded here. I didn't want anything to do with that. I'll gladly fade again. But if he's going to be low-owned, then I think he's a good GPP play. And he, Kelly Oubre played 38 minutes last game. I want to check what the rotation was, though. I didn't look at that. Um, let's take a look. So I want to see if he played most of the fourth, um, if they kept starters in. They did. So, um, if we're going to keep getting 38 minutes from Kelly Oubre with no Lamella ball, I think he's solid. I do. Um, pretty productive. He's going to shoot the ball probably 20 plus times. Gets a huge boost with no Lamella. So, sign me up for some Oubre. Um, Rogier are going to be an ownership thing for me. PJ Washington is doubtful. So, I believe JT Thor uh, will start. Let me just double check. Um, where's Charlotte? Um, yeah, JT Thor will start. You couldn't pay me to play JT Thor. I'd rather eat, I'd rather eat mud than play JT Thor. Mark Williams is fine, but Orlando very tough against bigs. Dennis Smith Jr. probably plays mid 20s minutes off the bench. Um, just there for me. Like he probably has to average like 1.2 fantasy points a minute to really be needed at this price. Like he needs to go for like 32 to 35 to be like a smash, um, which he can definitely do at this price tag. But not a must, now that he's priced up to 5.1k, but thought I would mention him. I think he's a pretty safe play. And um, if you think that Mark Williams gets into foul trouble, since it's a tougher spot for bigs, Nick Richards will be the beneficiary of that. Good point per minute guy. Just thought I would mention him as a dart throw. Tough matchup here for Brooklyn. Um, not much. I mean, I, I'll keep saying this. Nobody is catching on to that the Brooklyn Nets are running a seven-man rotation right now. 
Um, my only thing holding me back from absolutely loading up on Brooklyn is the matchup, but I will say they're running a completely different rotation here. They're playing basically a seven-man rotation, so I think they're good GPP plays here once again, even in a tough matchup. So I like Bridges for GPPs. I like Dimity for GPPs. Not too into Claxton, but I like Cam Johnson for GPPs. Um, Cam Thomas is playable. I don't love it, though. I think I'd rather play Dennis Smith Jr. for about the same price, and I don't really like anything else. But the main four guys here um, I think are good GPP plays just because the rotation, but the matchup isn't the best, um, and the game environment isn't the best. So just thought I'd mention that. Um, but I, I still think they're okay GPP plays. Let's move on to Boston. So not a good matchup here either. Um, of course, we all play Tatum here with no Brown, and he busts Jalen Brown back. He breaks the slate, so not too interested in Tatum, but he does have a ceiling. Kind of the same thing with Brown. Brogdon, smart. They're a little bit overpriced with everyone healthy. Not going to go to the bigs, so... Boston, very, very unappealing team to me. I think it's just Tatum and Brown for me at the top. So we have Simons, I believe, is doubtful for Portland. So Dame is just doing everything for the team right now. He's just doing everything for the team. His peripheral stats are up as well. He's been rebounding the ball pretty well. Um, a lot better of late. His assists have been very good of late as well. He's playing close to 40 minutes a game. I mean, what's not to like about Dame? He's just doing absolutely everything. Now you have Simons back out, which helps him even more. So Dame looks good. Jeremy Grant's fine at 7k just seems pretty safe gonna play huge minutes um drew eubanks watford they'll split the center minutes um okay options they did go smaller with watford last game but the pelicans also went smaller i don't know if that was to match the pelican size um we'll see but both are playable um and there is some value here so reddish thiable they're gonna start um i think our book I think both are reasonable values. I do prefer Reddish to Thibel. And then I'll mention Shaden Sharp off the bench, who's going to be really, really productive. He did play 31 minutes here when there was no Simons. Now, I don't know if we get that again. Like, he, Simons was out this game, and he only played, I believe he was out that game. Let me check. The 26th. Yeah, he was out that game. Um, Only played 13 minutes. But I think we get around 20 minutes, maybe a little bit more if he's playing well. He's a guy that has the upside to break the slate, so I'm very, very interested in Shaden Sharp for GPPs with no Simons. Um, I don't think I'll be going to anyone else, though, on Portland. Let's move over to Atlanta. So, okay spot here. I think Trey, Murray, both look good for GPPs. I might side with DeJounte Murray for the discount. Capella, Okongwu, they're splitting the center minutes. They're not really too interesting for me. Um, why? Excuse me, guys. Why did... Oh, okay. Kong was a massive foul trouble. But I think normally for Capella, we get like 28 minutes. And then a Kong would like 18 to 20 minutes. They're both fair plays. I'm not going to go to anyone else on Atlanta, though. Let's move on to Phoenix. So this team is just unplayable right now with Kevin Durant. And like we, saw, we still saw a pretty big game from Booker. Like he does have that upside. I still think he's going to shoot the ball a ton. So he's like a fine contrarian spot up. But with Kevin Durant in this offense... It definitely just changes a whole lot for me. So until the prices adjust, I don't think I'll be going to anyone on Phoenix. Um, Chris Paul, he's not going to shoot the ball as much anymore. Only saw eight shots. But his facilitating with the assist, I think, will go way up. I, I think you could honestly, Chris Paul with Kevin Durant on this team, see him average double, double uh, more than 10 assists, uh, double duty assists with Kevin Durant on this team. But... Really hard to go there with KD on this team. Akoji loses usage. He'll still play minutes, but yeah, just pretty unappealing team Phoenix is. And we got a tough spot for Chicago. Pretty unappealing to me as well. Like Vooch, it's the same breakdown as always. Vooch, Levine, DeRozan, all in play. They're all eating to each other's usage. I really only like to target these guys when one of them is out or if they're in like a smash matchup or if someone's underpriced. That is not the case today, so I'll be passing. I think if I was playing 150 lineups, though, I would definitely sprinkle in some. Um, I think given matchup-wise, I think Levine probably would be my favorite, and I'm not going to go to the value. Don't chase Patrick Beverly. <laughs> Complete outlier game. Um, I'd much rather play Austin Reeves for a fraction of... Uh, sorry, not a fraction of the ownership, but for the same price, basically. And the guards, just no thank you. Drummond, he'll get the backup five. Always mention him. If Vooch gets into foul trouble, could break the slate. But yeah, 
not much in that game. Not much in this game either. Um, well, on the Knicks side. So really tough spot here. Really sluggish game. Miami's plays very slow. So I'm not too into Randall. I'm not too into Bronson. RJ Hart. They'll kind of split those minutes. They'll probably play mid-20s minutes. Don't love either. Mitch Robinson, I would like. It was, sorry, guys. If it was a different matchup, like I was extremely high on Mitchell Robinson this slate. He absolutely smashed. Um, given the matchup, I'm not too into, in, interested this slate. But he does have a ceiling when he's playing well. And he can stay out of foul trouble. And yeah, um, regarding foul trouble, if you think Mitch gets into foul trouble, um, Hartenstein will benefit from that. Um, so I think a large field tournament dart. Thought I'd mention it. Let's move on to Miami. So if Butler questionable. If Butler's in in this tough spot, very, very sluggish, slow paced game, there's not much. Um, I'll probably just stay away from this team. But if Butler's out, that definitely does change some things. Then, bam, Harrow, they're going to have to do everything for this team. Um, I think both would look very good. I definitely would lean Tyler Harrow just because the Knicks are a very, very tough matchup for bigs um, as well. Two teams that are very tough against opposing bigs. So um, even if Butler's out, I think Bam makes a good fade in GPPs just solely off that because I think he'll be very popular. But disregarding ownership, I think Harrow, Bam, both look very good if Butler's out. Kevin Love, I think, would be fine. Um, Gabe Vincent gets a usage bump. Uh, solid. Um, and then we'll monitor who they start. Um, Struess could start. Caleb Martin could start. Um, we'll see. I, I don't know what they'll do with the starting lineup, but um, those will be the guys who would benefit. Kayla Martin, Max Struess, uh, Tyler Harrow, Bama DeBio. I don't think Kevin Love will benefit too much. Um, I think he's just the same. Could be wrong there, but um, yeah, whatever interest in the uh, fringe guys in like Gabe, Struess, Martin, if Butler's out, but Bam, Harrow, both look very good if uh, Butler's out. And this game looks very, very appealing. Um, Two teams that play fast, two teams that don't play too much defense. So even at 9,600, I still think Markkinen's a pretty good play. Probably gets you close to a double-double. Probably shoots the ball 20-plus times. Um, it's it's great. It's a great spot against Oklahoma City. Bigs do very, very well against them. I mean, last game he went for 60. So, yeah, I think Markkinen's solid even at this price. I think I would give an edge to, um, what's it called, to um, Anthony Edwards for $200 cheaper. But I still do like Markkinen. There's some other stuff to like, too. So, Walker Kessler, really good spot against OKC as well. He absolutely demolished them last game. Played huge minutes, too. So, as long as he can stay out of foul trouble, and he got into foul trouble here, like, he's been on pace for pretty big minutes of late. I think he's pretty solid. I think THT is still solid, even at this price tag. I think people might shy away from him at this price tag. I think that might be a mistake. Just a, such a productive player, and I think this game environment is very good. So, I still like THD even at that price. Kyle Lennox just there for me. Chris Dunn might be a fade for me. He was he was really, really busting until Agbaji got injured. And then he closed the game because Agbaji got injured. So, don't expect 26 minutes again. I think we get around 20, which makes him a fine value. But if he'll be popular, I think it's a fade. Agbaji's playable. And then I don't really like anything else. Let's move on to OKC, though. But I like this team once again. So... <laughs> I play Giddy here. Season low in minutes. Play Giddy here. Whatever. Play Giddy here. Season low low minutes. I, I had him in my lineup here until the Embiid news happened. I swap off and he breaks the slate. But I assume they're going to play their guys normal minutes again here. And if that's the case, in a really good spot against Utah, I like Giddy quite a bit. I think Jalen Williams is solid, even at 6.8K. Uh, he's just been on another level of late. They're actually putting the ball in ball in Jalen hands. Jalen Williams hands a lot more. He's actually bringing the ball up more as well. So even at this price tag, I think he's a pretty safe play. Lou Dort, I still like at 5.5K as long as he can hit his shots, as long as they play their guys normal minutes. Isaiah Jill start, reasonable value. Um... Always the risk of getting benched, though, but perfectly fine if you want to go to Joe. I don't think I'll be going to anyone else, though. Last set of games here, guys. Last four games. Memphis at Denver. Really tough spot here. I think it's just John Morant as a contrarian spin-up for me, and that is it. 
On to Denver. There's not much. We have Gordon, MPJ Probable. I think Jokic looks amazing. I, I don't know why he's not like in that price tier with like Luka. It makes no sense to me. So I think Jokic looks like one of the best spend-ups on the slate. No Steven Adams on the other side, which helps as well. So love Jokic per usual. Jamal Murray at 7.8K. Now the price has come down. I think is reasonable. Don't hate it. Don't love it. Solid, I think. Gordon, MPJ, no. You can pay me to play either when everyone's healthy. And I don't think I'll be going to anyone else on Denver. And let's go over to the Pelicans. So we have Jonas Valanciunas, Judas Doubtful. We have, obviously, Zion going to be out. We have Nance out. So um, Ingram's going to lead this team in usage. His usage rate with no Zion is absolutely bonkers. So, um, sorry, guys. I actually need to exit that. I forgot I was in queue. I'm um, going to play huge minutes as well. I think 8.6K is still a little bit too cheap for his role here. So Ingram, I like quite a bit. I think Seed is a fine contrarian play. Josh Richardson at 5.1K should start. Um, reasonable play. But Willie Hernan Gomez started last game. He did only play 20 minutes because the Portland Trailblazers went smaller. Um, now they're going up against the Warriors. So Warriors like to play small. If they start Willie Hernan Gomez and we get 20 minutes again, I still really like him but I think there are paths to where he doesn't play a lot of minutes because the Warriors like to go small a lot so just be a little bit careful there but if Willie Hernan Gomez starts like him a lot Jackson Hayes got the backup five run but once again they all they went small didn't play a ton they could go small with Hayes as well but they went small I believe with Trey Murphy and Najee Marshall um but he's playable um, if you think they go small again and close with Najee and Trey Murphy and they play Najee 27 minutes again and Trey Murphy over 30 minutes again, then they're firmly, firmly in play. I don't know if they'll do that. So let's go through the rotation with you guys. I already looked at it, but I want to show you guys. So Najee Marshall and Trey Murphy, they weren't on pace to play a ton of minutes and they played 12 minutes in the fourth quarter. So if you take 12 away from their 12 away from their uh, minutes. You'll have Trey Murphy at 20. You'll have Najee Marshall at, um, let's take away like eight actually, because they'll, they'll probably like play up until here. Uh, you got like 20 minutes for Najee and like 24 for Trey or whatever. Um, I don't know how to project that because like maybe Trey plays more because um, he always plays more in these spots. But um, I think they're, fine if they're going to get ownership i'd rather fade though but once again just like keep an eye on the starting lineup keep an eye on like beat writers what do you think will happen um with the warriors going small um like i said if hernan gomez gets over 20 minutes again he looks amazing jackson hayes is playable and then if you think they go small then you can consider like trey murphy Najee marshall those kind of guys let's move on to the Pel or warriors so not the best matchup, but if they're going to keep this game close, well, I think it'll be close regardless. But Pool Clay, they're going to lead the way offensively. Clay's been phenomenal of late. I like Pool. I like Clay. Draymond is just there for me. Uh, Dante, I think, is a relatively safe play. I'm not too into Looney. If you think the game blows out, Kuminga probably smashes in garbage time. Just there. Clippers, back to back here. We're going to have to monitor if anyone's going to sit. Like Kawhi, Paul George, we'll see. I, I don't know if they will, but as of right now, we have to go over it, assuming they're in. We also have Zubac. Uh, I don't know if he'll, I think he'll be back. I think it was just rest today. So um, assuming everyone's in, there's just not much. Like Kawhi's fine contrarian play. Paul George's fine contrarian play. Russell Westbrook in a fast-paced matchup, I definitely do have some interest in. He had a bad game tonight. Uh, and then if Zubac back, you can't go to Plumlee. But if Zubac is out, and they go to Plumlee. I like them quite a bit, but did only I think 25 minutes at this price tag is enough against Sacramento if they run that same rotation. So if the is out, I really like Plumlee, and I don't think I'll be going to anyone else. So let's move on to Sacramento. So we have Fox. I believe will be back. Yeah, he'll be back. Um, I don't like this match, but also Sabonis Fox not too appealing to me. The wings they're just there for me. They're all fine plays, but one of them will probably get benched, and I don't like anything else. And this game looks amazing. I absolutely love this game. This game looks phenomenal to me. So, Lakers, terrible against guards. I absolutely love Anthony Edwards for GPPs. It's an absolute smash spot for him. Love him. I think Rudy Gobert is fine. I really like Mike Conley at 5.5K. Once again, smash play, smash match against Lakers. Fast pace. 
Mike Conley probably thrives in these spots. I really like both the guards here for Minnesota. I love Mike Conley. I like Anthony Edwards. You guys are probably puking in your mouth with me saying I like Mike Conley, but I think slow mo is reasonable at 5.4K. Um, I don't like anything else, though. Let's move on to the Lakers. There's some things to like here. So, AD will be back. I think he looks like one of the better spend ups on the slate. I think Dennis Schroeder is still too cheap at 5.8K. I'd like him quite a bit. Vanderbilt, no, with that price tag. I think Beasley is solid at 5K. Probably plays around 30 minutes. Good point per minute guy. Just has to find his shot. He's been shooting very, very poorly of late. So, Really like AD, really like Schroeder, like Beasley quite a bit. I like Austin Reeves for value, who's been playing over 20 minutes. Solid point per minute guy as well, so a lot to like in this last game. Might be my favorite game on the slate, so I hope this video helped you all out, and I will talk to you all tomorrow.